Welcome to Extra Time and it's been quite an evening. Man United 3, Sheffield United 0. 108 days after a packed Old Trafford produced an incredible atmosphere for the win against City. Tonight's match against Sheffield United was played behind closed doors. We'll be talking about the game very shortly when I'm joined by some special fans, well, at least one special fan hopefully, there in spirit, featured on one of the fabulous montages created by our fabulous football club. Also, technology permitting, I'll be joined by our good friend Gordon Hill, live from the USA. Meantime, uh, over in the uh, Liverpool game, they're leading 2-0 at half-time. But let's start with some really positive news. My regular viewers will know I spent the past month trying to rally support for honouring the great Jimmy Murphy. And today, Ed Woodward received a letter on behalf of fans and former players lobbying the football club to support the campaign. These six organisations have united to lead the campaign. On Sunday, I attended a virtual meeting on Zoom when the representatives agreed a plan of action. It was a meeting also attended by Jimmy's grandson, Paul Murphy. Paul, you remember, was on this show three weeks ago, urging our football club to do the right thing. It was the first time ever, as far as I'm aware, the Murphy family had spoken publicly to call for action. The previous week, we had Brian Mulholland, who was also on this show, to promote his petition to rename K-Stand the Jimmy Murphy stand. Since then, we've also had Alan Wardle speaking on behalf of the former players, pledging the support of the Association of Former Manchester United Players. And last week, it was Pat Burns of the Manchester Munich Memorial Foundation who came on the show to announce a consortium of the Trail Blazing Six. And as I've told you, they've now written to the club requesting a meeting to discuss a stand and a statue in Jimmy Murphy's name. I'll keep you posted as this story unfolds. Meantime, please give your support on social media. I'm currently using the hashtag Jimmy Murphy campaign alongside our Man United the religion hashtag. Also watch out for further announcements from the club and the group of six who are leading the uh, lobbying. I'm sure there'll be a chance for everyone to get involved as this story develops. Yesterday at Old Trafford, we said goodbye to another former Manchester United hero. It was the funeral of Tony Dunn, and the day began with the funeral cortege passing by the stadium on its way to Southern Cemetery. Fans and workmen on duty at Old Trafford were there to applaud. A lone piper leading the hearse drawn by four horses draped in United colours. Tony Dunn played 535 times for the Reds that's more than any other player from outside the UK. Born in Dublin, of course, Dunn spent 13 years playing for United, most famously in the 1968 European Cup winning team. This is the present sent to the family last week by the Association of Former Man United Players, a beautifully framed image of that famous night at Wembley when United became England's first ever winners of the European Cup. And that video uh, of the funeral cortege, by the way, was filmed in part by my good friend John Aylesbury, who lives in Samat Busby Way and is seen most days at Old Trafford selling scarves and other Manchester United souvenirs. Hopefully, in a moment, we're going to have a guest... Uh, Sadly, there were no fans inside the stadium tonight, and for that, there was a strange experience, albeit surreal, for the famous Alex Neild and his parents, John and Vicky. I'm hoping that John is going to join us in a moment. I'm going to try him on Skype. We were going to do a, a little test beforehand, but I think he might have got caught in traffic because he was watching the game with Alex and uh, had to make a trip. So now I'm going to just try and raise him. If we don't get him, we'll go through the, uh, through the comments. John Neil, there you are. <laughs> OK, let's cut to the cameras. OK, I think you probably got stuck in traffic, but uh, you're probably just celebrating the game because it was a good game, wasn't it? It was, it was fantastic, fantastic, absolutely, absolutely brilliant. brilliant. Um, obviously, obviously, Johnny Marshall's uh, first, first, first hat trick for United. United. Um, unfortunately, unfortunately, no one was, uh, no fans were able to witness it live, but uh, I'm sure that's, um, that won't that set in too much. <laughs> no, it looked fantastic. I just want to say before we carry on too far, I'm hoping there's no echo because we didn't get a chance to do a test, but... Uh, if I see any signs on the, uh, the comments to say we've got an echo, we'll, we'll make an adjustment. But I'm fairly confident, Touchwood, that this time we haven't got the echo because last week we had a fantastic 
interview with Gordon Neal, which was slightly marred. I think a lot of people probably thought it was delay because uh, coming over from America, it's uh, quite difficult. And there was a delay, which we had to contend with. But uh, anyway, John, about the match, what was, uh, what was Alex like tonight? He must have been quite excited. No, it really was. Uh, obviously, we've been desperate for, uh, for football to come back. Um, so, uh, yeah, he had all his uh, flags out and uh, scarves and he was cheering along. So, uh, yeah, it was good to score early goals as well. Made it a little bit more comfortable, but uh, um, missed some guilty chances there. But uh, we've been a bit rusty, some of the players, being out for that long. I just brought up the uh, one of the images that you sent me. Uh, of the, uh, it was fantastic. I mean, everybody's put in a big effort to uh, try and make the stadiums look interesting, and uh, I think we've, I think we've won that one, haven't we? I mean, I know you're well featured, so you must be quite delighted with that. But it was pretty spectacular, wasn't it? The way that the the club dressed the stadium. Yeah, yeah I think it's absolutely, absolutely superb. superb. Um, you, you know, know full credit to Manchester United, United for giving fans, fans that opportunity. I think, I think they were overwhelmed with the, the amount of people uh, that you know that submitted photos. So. so. With respect to, to, to them, them. Uh, I think they've been fantastic throughout this uh, lockdown. So uh, I think it, uh, it just shows the how much they, they do appreciate the fans. It's, uh, it's good to see. You must have been chuffed because I know I've seen it all over social media this morning. You must have been chuffed that somebody caught the uh, video and the stills for you. That was quite nice. Wasn't yeah, it? <laughs> we were so lucky. We was the video came out last night on YouTube. Uh, as United posted. Quite uh, an arty uh, video, look like, like some drone shots. Um, uh, United uh, uh, lit up at, at night, um, and we were desperate to try and find ourselves. And probably like a lot of fans, uh, you know, pausing the free frame with the video and taking taking screenshots. But uh, yeah, we were so lucky that uh, someone contacted me first thing this morning with uh, MUTV. He was happy for his, uh, his name to be credited, uh, and I was happy to do so. I think, I think he got, got inundated with the repress, uh, obviously new people that actually wanted, um, you know, uh, their photos to be shown. It, we just, he was in the right place at the right time. We were just so lucky. But Alex was up to made up to uh, to be able to see yourself virtually at the at the stadium. Um, it's fantastic. It's it's the second best thing I think really if you can't be there. I was quite excited tonight to see Pogba and Bruno play together, and obviously they were slightly eclipsed by Martial. But again, it was a uh, very positive night, wasn't it? I think Pogba and Bruno, they uh, they were involved quite a lot, weren't they? Definitely, yeah. I think um, after seeing him come on against um, Spurs, uh, Pogba, um, he, he, he changed the game. He looks, he looks so much more dynamic. Uh, him and Bruno have linked up really well, and uh, I think fans were excited to see them both start today. Uh, I think they weren't let down. Um, we started off really well, got a goal in the first six, seven minutes. Uh, let's say it could have been three or four nil up at, uh, before half time, but uh, that wasn't to be. Uh, but yeah, comfortable win in the end. It's really, really good. Um, some great performances. Rashford got at least two assists um, with the first and the third. I can't remember who got the, uh, the second one down, but uh, yeah, it was a great performance overall. I'm well happy. <laughs> we have sorted out the echo. What's I think what's happening is uh, I'm fading my mic down when, when you're speaking. So uh, when you're speaking, the echo's coming back. So that's a, it's not the ideal solution, but it is a solution. And I'm getting some feedback to say that it's working. So thank you, Wayne Barton. And thank you a few other people who've uh, given us the heads up there. That's fantastic. And it's, it's nice to have somebody watching. Otherwise, we're just talking to ourselves. We do that sometimes anyway. But uh, and I was going to say, anyway, since I made that film five years ago about Mudser and Alex has made some tremendous progress, not only... Uh, as a celebrity now, but also he seems to be growing up quite nicely, doesn't he? You must be very pleased with the way it's going for Alex. Oh, definitely. As a as a parent, it's so you 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 always want your best for your children. Um, but yeah, it seems a long time ago uh, since you were at our house recording. Um, it was a great um, great documentary that you did for months of there for the twenty fifth anniversary, uh, and we were we were just very happy to be um, and privileged to be part of that. But uh, yeah, he's come on uh, leaps and bounds. It, 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 the passion for football and watching football and everything that goes with it, um, he, he can't teach that. He just he understands it, and that's that's what he does. That's his passion, and I love to uh, to you know try and feed that and uh, help him live his dreams really. And that's all I'll do as a parent, so, as anyone would do. <laughs> You're doing a fantastic job. It must be really weird though, because you guys go to. Most games, you certainly go to all the home games and you get to quite a lot of the away games and you seem to travel all around the world. So how does it feel to be watching a home game on television when, you, when, you, when you've got an empty seat there? 
Yeah, it's extremely strange. It's uh, very uncertain times that, uh, that everyone's um, that, that's been thrown into. Um, obviously, we'd love to have been there, but um, unfortunately, I think it is the right thing to have supporters at the moment. Um, there's obviously a wider uh, issue uh, with the uh, the virus and what have you, uh, so we can get that fully under control. Um, nobody really knows the timescales, but uh, yeah, reluctantly we were we will watch it at home. Um, it's uh, it doesn't beat the the buzz. It's very hard to get excited like you are in the stands, but um, yeah, it's just a different experience, I suppose. It's uh, it has been very unusual, like you say. Uh, we go to probably 90, uh, 95 percent of the games, uh, so it is quite an unusual experience uh, to be confronted with. Them. I wonder what you prefer for sound, because the first match I watched, the Spurs game, was just the sound in the stadium, and tonight I watched it with the artificial effects, which were quite good, to be honest. Uh, what do you prefer? Yeah, I think both Alex and I prefer the, the artificial effects. Um, I think I believe it was EA Sports who do the FIFA games that are given Sky that, um, that kind of sound. Uh, obviously, they um, feed that into the ground. I think it works really well. There's obviously somebody uh, working it live and doing the oohs and ahs and cheers at the right time. So he's got a full-time job, or she. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I think it works really well. Uh, I think it's hard to watch without um, without the crowd. I know it is um, artificial, but it has been recorded at an actual game. So it is probably the best you can get. Uh, but I prefer it myself. Um, like I say, it's not what the players hear. It's a bit, obviously, they're, they're playing to an empty stadium. Um, but yeah, I, prefer, I much prefer it. I can actually, at least feel part of it a bit more. I think they did quite a good job as well, choosing the right effects. They played twenty times quite a lot, and uh, it's, it's, it was quite impressive. And I must admit, I did make some money in the past, not not from Sky, but from uh, on another occasion, I had to supply some sound effects for a football club, and uh, it's a good little earner if you can get it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it is. Probably that one with the uh, creating banners that goes over seats. I think if you're in the, that business as well at the moment, uh, every stadium's got to have uh, all, uh, all the seats covered up with um, various sponsors. But United have done a fantastic, uh, fantastic job. I think that fan mode day, I think it covers um, you know three quarters of the stadium. I think that over 40,000 entries. So um, it's absolutely fantastic. I don't know what they're going to do with the stuff afterwards. Um, I'm sure everyone would like their own personal copy of it but uh, I don't think that's going to happen unfortunately <laughs> That's brilliant hopefully I mean I'm, I'm playing it by the seat of my pants today because I've had a really busy week and I've had to do some uh, some other work which makes me money because this, this programme is a little bit of a just a little promotional uh, thing that I do and I do it for fun and I do it to try and promote causes that I believe in and to try and promote people that I like like yourself and uh I'm hoping in a moment we're going to get Gordon Hill on, but just in case we can't raise him, because I couldn't get him on the uh, test either. So, uh, what, uh, a little bit before your time, Gordon Hill, but he's always been a very popular guy with the fans, hasn't he? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, he's probably, um, like I say, just before my time, uh, I started going in the um, kind of early 80s, so he probably, just, um, he probably has ended his career there. Um, I think it, did he play to late, uh, late 70s, I believe, so... My dad will certainly be uh, more aware. I, I've to watch uh, clips as well of him. Uh, but yeah, fantastic player. And uh, I think it, it's great what he's doing there over there in America as well. Um, mm. You know, he's done a great job of, uh, of um, you know, advertising that for him as well. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll speak to Gordon about what he's doing a little bit later, hopefully. And if he's not there, it's going to be a short programme. But I do thank everybody who's been on board. And we've got quite a few people from Malta. Uh, Joseph Tedesco is there. We've got Rose Cook Monk, the uh, founder of the Duncan Edwards Foundation, who's uh, involved with that campaign to honour Jimmy Murphy. We've got Bridie Murphy, no relation, who's always on. She's uh, one of our super fans. We've got Richard Sharp, who's another super fan who works at Old Trafford, I believe. We've got Wayne Barton, the famous author, who's written books about, uh, he's certainly written one book about Jimmy Murphy. I'm not sure if he's written more than one, but he, he does write books. Wayne is becoming quite prolific as an author and he's doing fantastic. And uh, He's really helped me tonight because he told me that I sorted out the echo. So when I stop speaking, <laughs> I think probably we're probably done, actually, John. I really want to thank you for coming on and give our best wishes to Alex. I guess it's his bedtime now, so <laughs> hopefully I'll see you both at a match in the not-too-distant future. Thanks, Aaron. It's all good luck with, uh, with what you're doing. It's fantastic. Keep it up. Thank you.
Cheers, my friend. I'm going to cut away now to another camera. So I'm, I'm sort of explaining and directing and producing at the same time. So I'm going to cut away to myself. But thank you and ap appreciate the effort you made there with a the nice background. You've done, done us proud, John. So see you next time, mate. Cheers, guys. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. OK, we're back. Sorry, thank you. It's good, to have, it's good to have an audience. I had my sound down because I was reducing the echo on uh, the old... Uh, John, John Neal interview, so I hopefully you got sound back now. Sorry, because I was talking to myself then. Thank you. It's, <laughs> this is real <laughs> Guerrilla TV. What I wanted to say was, well, what I probably said when I went mute was that I've been really excited to see Bruno and uh, Pogba play together, and they did well again today. I think they're going to grow as a partnership, but uh, I've always been a big fan of Anthony Martial, and I know he has his, he has his fans, and he has some people who criticise him because he's not always doing it every week, but I think he showed today what he can do, he's a clinical finisher and uh, when he's playing with good players, as he is doing with Bruno and uh, Pogba, I think we're going to see the best of him hopefully in the coming weeks and uh, hopefully in the coming seasons. And I'm just checking the comments, people can see me, can hear me, you can see me. <laughs> OK, so uh, I'm going to try Gordon again and he's probably watching the end of the Liverpool game because he's, uh, he's pretty much watched all the games so far. We'll give him a go. And if we don't get him this time, I'll keep talking for another five minutes. There you go. OK. Let's have, I was going to play this little video because uh, I do sometimes go to games with uh, John and Alex. And uh, this was something that I filmed before a game last season, which sums up why everybody loves. It's only very short. It's only about 15 seconds, but it sums up why people love little Alex Neal. Yeah, Alex, he's always got a smile on his face. He's very inspirational. He's a fantastic little man. And uh, I've known him for about five years ago, five years now. And as uh, we mentioned in that, uh, that's, uh, that's thank you, Wayne, because Wayne's going to text him. He's probably catching the end of the Liverpool game. Uh, I was hoping that I was going to get him on and he was giving me a little bit of commentary. But the game's pretty much, oh, it was pretty much over at half-time, really, because Liverpool were winning 2-0. There's a comment here from Joseph Tedesco. Jo problem is that Martial... Is our only finisher by nature at the moment. Yes, good point. And we're, de we're definitely not the finished uh, article at the moment, but I've, we've definitely done fantastic in the transfer market since Ollie's taken over. Uh, we mentioned this a few times on this show. He's made five good signings, and they're all good signings, and he's also got rid of a bit of dead wood. I mean, they're all guys that have done well for our club in the past, but it's time to move on, and Ollie's doing a great job building a new squad, and hopefully... If we can uh, spend money and get some more players, and I would certainly like to see a, another star striker come in, because uh, Martial can't do it every week. I mean, Marcus Rashford, of course, is a good goal scorer, but uh, they're both young guys, and uh, they're going to get better. They've got a great future ahead. I mean, I love the fact that we uh, give young players a chance, and that's what we've always done, of course. And uh, at the moment, we've got a good balance of youngsters. I'm a big fan of Brandon Williams. I know Ollie's a, a big fan of his. I was at a dinner. A muds of dinner earlier in the season, and uh, Ollie was talking very, uh, very passionately about Brandon Williams. I can see John's uh, following the John Neal is back watching the game, and he says it's Liverpool four nil. That's uh, it's only the inevitable, isn't it? They only need another two points now. So even if they don't play again, they're going to win the title. We have to come to terms with it, and uh, it's really a case of now: is uh, Ollie going to be the man who can knock Liverpool back off their perch? I believe he can. He, I believe he can do. We don't want to talk about the Scousers now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, I, don't, I don't ignore the Scousers. I don't ignore City either. I think uh, it helps. Without rivals, there's no game, is there? What I don't like is where rivalry spills over into, into malicious hatred. I mean, without banter, there isn't any football, is there? I mean, without opposition, there isn't any football. So, you know, obviously Liverpool's not our favourite team, but somebody's got to win the league. And it's quite surprising, really, because City, to be honest, I think are a much better team than Liverpool. Uh, it's, it's hard to understand how they could be so far behind but obviously when you're defending a title it's always a lot more difficult I mean United won it three times in a row once and that's very difficult to do and uh, you know at least I think if Liverpool, well, Liverpool are going to win the title next season you know we're not quite ready we're not quite on the level of City and Liverpool at the moment but I don't think we're far from it and if we can get a good start we can be up there and if we can make a few good signings we can be up there I don't know if the Liverpool game's finished. If anybody knows the Liverpool fin game is finished, let me know and I'll give Gordon another try. Uh, let me go now. Because it must be pretty close. I mean, 4-0, I mean, it's not exactly in doubt, is it? So. 
got Gordon, by the way. I'm doing some work with Gordon, which is why he's going to be on the show from time to time. I'm helping him promote his new soccer academy, which is due to start in September. No, he's given us the cold shoulder today. <laughs> what I should have done is record it. It's a lot easier to record, but I, I do like the... I do like the spontaneity of doing it live and giving people a chance to ask the questions because I think even though we had the echo last week when we had Gordon on, it, was, it went down really well and people liked the opportunity of uh, talking to... Uh, text to Gordon have been delivered, so hopefully... OK, thanks, Wayne. Wayne's keeping me posted because Wayne's a good friend of, uh, of Gordon. I think Wayne did a Gordon Hill book as well. I need to get Wayne on the show to talk about his books. I mean, he's got an Eric Cantona book. I think he's got an upcoming David Beckham book. I saw that advertised somewhere and... Uh, Wayne Barton is a, a prolific author. Uh, I mean, I've got a few books in me, but I just haven't got enough days in the week. I mean, I will get round to writing books in the future. I mean, I, tw I spent 27 years writing for the Sunday Mirror, covering football up and down the country, and I've written for most of the national newspapers. You know, I've worked in radio, newspaper and TV. This uh, old live streaming lark is a lot more different, especially when you're doing it on your own. Can I get one question in? OK, we've got a question in from Nicholas. Give me a question. <laughs> Of course, as long as it's not too personal. But uh, there's not many questions you can't answer, ask me. Uh, so far away if you've got any questions for me. Coming up on uh, too many books, says Wayne Borton. Now, you can never have too many books. I mean, they're all selling well. Uh, there's, a there's, a, there's a debate going on behind the scenes about whether or not we've got enough strikers and uh, not sure he can become the striker that we need where our rivals are at the moment. Yeah, we, we haven't quite got the... F I mean, I remember, obviously, we all, a lot of us remember when we won the treble and we had uh, four prolific strikers. I mean, as Fergie used to say, you can never have too many strikers. And uh, when you can have two on and bring on another two, or sometimes have three, or sometimes have four on, that, to me, is what football's all about. I mean, football's about scoring goals. And even though we're doing fantastic at the moment and I'm very excited about the potential, we don't score enough goals. I mean, we scored three tonight, but a more... Ruthless team maybe would have scored five or six and uh, maybe next season. I feel quite confident under Oli, Oli at the wheel. He's the real deal. That's my catchphrase. And uh, yes, no more questions coming in. So I'm, you know, I could keep talking about the game. I mean, uh, obviously, Anthony Martial was the, was the star. He scored his hat-trick. It's a shame that there weren't people in the stadium to, uh, to see him do that. Uh, I'm also excited about Mason Greenwood. I mean, obviously... We all know about Mason Greenwood and he's, it's great that he's learning in the... Uh, something's come up in the background here which is covering up my screen. Yeah, Mason Greenwood. I mean, what's, what's fabulous about Mason Greenwood is he can, he can score with both feet, which is, which is phenomenal. I don't understand why footballers can't kick with both feet. I mean, I can kick with both feet and I've always played with both feet. I mean, on, on, uh, where are we? on Sunday I was playing football for four hours with my grandson, my uh, son's stepson and... Uh, I kick with both feet and I'm trying to teach uh, the grandson to kick with both feet because I think, you know, you should be able to kick with both feet. It's not just there for standing on, is it? I think at this stage United have done in the Corona... What's that saying? Yeah, I think this, this, what United have done this season during the lockdown has been fantastic. United have been setting uh, standards for other clubs to follow. Uh, I certainly agree with that. John Neal, my good mate, he agrees. Ollie is the man to turn United around. I think he's winning over, a, I mean, John's never been a doubter. John's always been a, a faithful follower of all our managers. Uh, and uh, I know he likes Oli. And uh, it's hard not to like, it's impossible not to like Oli, isn't it? He's such a nice guy. And I'd like to see him be succeed because I think he's got it in him. But also I, I want to see the good guys succeed. You know, why can't, why do you have to be a bit of a monster? I mean, Fergie was the greatest manager of all time, but we all know about the hairdryer. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Oli... Uh, I think Ollie's got a bit more steel to him than people think. I mean, he comes across as being a char charming guy, and he is a charming guy. But I think there's a, I think he's got a little bit of steel in him. I think he's, uh, I think he, I think he's also got the respect of the players because he coaches them properly, and he's got a good uh, backroom team around him, and he doesn't take all the glory himself. He likes to share it around, which is uh, something that a certain other guy didn't do. It was all about I and me, and uh, now it's all about we and us, which is fantastic. What's that? We'll end the unbeaten run. We'll end unbeaten this season. Yeah, I'd like to see United end unbeaten this season. That's quite possible. I mean, next week, next up, we've got Norwich in the FA Cup. They're coming thick and fast, these games now. And uh, it's a tricky place to go, Carrow Road. I mean, I, back in the 90s, I used, my company, we used to cover all the home matches at Norwich. In fact, we used to cover the home matches for a lot of clubs back in the 90s. Uh, 
one season we did 12, 13 football clubs. In fact, that famous game at Old Trafford when United won 9 0, that was uh, my company, we covered that, and my late uncle Tony was the commentator. I remember he rang me up the next day and said, uh, Can we bring out the DVD? And I said, I'd love to, but I've only got the rights to bring out the Ipswich DVDs, and I couldn't really bring out a film saying we got smashed 9 0, even though I'm a Man United fan, I don't think I got away with that one. But I've still got the rushes, I've still got the post match interviews, I'll probably dig into that at some point. And uh, it, that was the game when uh, Andy Cole, of course, scored uh, five goals. Okay, I can see Stephen Murphy and Paul Murphy, the twins, the grandsons of Jimmy Murphy, are both on, and uh, I'm doing my best to uh, promote the campaign, which uh, we started off with Brown Mulholland on uh, about a month ago, and uh, we we promoted his petition, and uh, then we had Paul Murphy on, and then we had uh, Alan Wardle on, and then we had Pat Burns on, and the momentum seems to have kicked in, and hopefully, I can't believe that. You know, I've seen. Uh, I didn't post the link because I'm not promoting it, but there was a, a guy that came on earlier who was promoting, he wants the K-stand to be named the, the Samat Busby stand. But uh, for me, we've already got uh, we've already got Samat Busby Way, which is the address for the stadium. We've got the Busby statue. And uh, Jimmy Murphy is a man who's forgotten. You know, uh, all players that I've spoken to from who remember Jimmy and were around at that time and... You know, worked under him afterwards. They all say that without Jimmy Murphy, there wouldn't be a Manchester United. And as, and as Paul Murphy rightly said when he came on the show a couple of weeks ago, if you ask, if you stop guys in the street and ask them who Jimmy Murphy was, a lot, a hyper percentage of United fans wouldn't know who Jimmy Murphy is. And unless you go to the uh, the museum and find out about him, there's not real, there's not, there's no visible presence of Jimmy Murphy at the stadium. You know, sometimes we sing about Busby, but there isn't a Jimmy Murphy song. Maybe there should be a Jimmy Murphy song. I saw somebody suggest that a little while ago and uh, maybe that would be a good one. Let me have a look through the comments again. Most people are talking among themselves and I don't know if they're really listening to me, but let's give Gordon a get another go. I'm not sure if the match is over. It's got to be close to over. Wow, it's 10 to uh, 10. to 10. We'll give him one last go and if we don't get Gordon this time, we'll save him for next time. So Skype calling. See what happens. I can't remember to turn the microphone down when he speaks this time because uh, it is real Gorilla TV. Uh, no, no, he's gone. Whatever's happened is... Oh, I've lost Skype altogether now. Whatever's happened, Gordon's uh, not available. So uh, let's save Gordon for another week. You know, uh, I'm working with Gordon for the next three months anyway. I'm going to do a little uh, feature about his uh, soccer academy. What we're really waiting for at the moment is to know what the, uh, to know what the travel arrangements are going to be uh, closer to September. At the moment, uh, it's going to be difficult for Gordon to get in players from other countries because uh, nobody's been allowed in and uh, we've got the quarantine situations. But as Gordon said last week, I mean, America's pretty much 50 countries all rolled into one and there's a lot of players over in America and I'm sure there's stars that you can find and take them up to uh, a higher level. Uh, I saw some of the guys he brought over last year. He brought over some young guys and girls and... Uh, he gives them a good education. He's not just talk, talking to them about football. He's, he's giving them his, the, the uh, experience and the knowledge he's gotten. W one of the key things for me is not just about being a good player and having potential. It's about having the right attitude. I know Gordon will always talk about attitude. He talks about a lot more than that, but attitude is a key thing. And I've always sensed with Manchester United, if you get to the highest level, if you get to play for Manchester United, that's the thing that sorts out the top players. One is consistency. You've got to have the skill in the first place. You don't go to Man United if you're not a good football player. But if you really want to be a star, you've got to have the right attitude. You've got to want to do it. I mean, for me, if you could, if you could, uh, if you could crossbreed Roy Keane <laughs> with uh, a, a skillful player, you'd have the best player on the planet. I mean, I love Roy Keane. I mean, he does sort of like make you laugh. And it's, you know, the, the game last week against Spurs, I mean, it was, uh, it was not, you couldn't not, not, not miss TV. I mean, I think he was a little bit harsh on David De Gea, but I am a little bit worried about De Gea. I think he's going through a difficult time at the moment and I think there was times in the past where maybe Oli could have taken him out the firing line and given him a rest. But I understand fully that you've got to stick with your guy and keep his confidence up and uh, it'd be interesting to see what happens at the end of the season, whether or not we uh, stick for uh, David De Gea for next season or if we bring back Dean Henderson from Sheffield United because, uh, I mean, Sheffield United, of course, were without their best player today, the goalkeeper, but don't think it would have made a lot of difference. United were just different class today to Sheffield United and I think... Uh, the break, we haven't really, we haven't really broken stride in, in spite of the three-month break, but I think Sheffield United, it came at a bad time for them. Comment here for sure, Kelly. 
Yeah, good comment, Sean. Sean is one of the people I respect the most on this subject. Sean is a very knowledgeable fan. A super fan who's been around a lot longer than me. Well, not, maybe not a lot longer, but he's been around longer than me. He's a bit older than me, but... Uh, yeah, he says, he rightly says, Bobby, Bobby Charlton says he owes everything to Jimmy Murphy. A lot of players do. I mean, uh, obviously, United won, the, United won the Youth Cup the first five years it was staged. And uh, some teams were complaining because Duncan Edwards was playing in the youth team, uh, as well as the first team, because he was able to play for both, because he was only 22 when we lost Duncan. And as Bobby says, uh, even though he played for a few seasons, you know, he was a fantastic player. But not only was he a fantastic player, he was a fantastic role model. And it never ceases to amaze me, all the old players who I've interviewed, who've played with Duncan Edwards or who've watched him play, have all said the same thing. They say he was the greatest footballer that ever lived and uh, I wasn't alive. I was born after we lost Duncan and uh, that's one of the great tragedies, apart from losing him, of course, was that we haven't got archive that we can watch. There's a little bit of archive on the internet if you hunt, but uh, most of us have seen it all and uh, it would have been fantastic to see more of Duncan Edwards. Anyway, I really do thank you all for uh, being here. Yep. Good comment there from Kerry. Keane was a little bit harsh on David De Gea. I agree. Sometimes I think he's... Uh, sometimes I think Roy Keane is playing Roy Keane. It's almost like he's playing himself in a movie. And uh, I think uh, I really enjoyed the uh, the banter with... Uh, what's his name? The funny guy from France. I've forgotten his name all of a sudden. <laughs> because he was... He couldn't believe it. Uh, and uh, Patrice Evra. Patricia, as Paddy Crevin used to call him. <laughs> Paddy Crevin called Patrice Evra Patricia once when he couldn't remember his name. But uh, yeah, Patrice. But I love Patrice Evra. He's a funny guy. And uh, he was a perfect foil for Roy Keane last week because uh, he really cle- <laughs> he knew that Roy was over the top there. And uh, I understand what Roy Keane was saying because I've been pitch side at games when uh, I've watched uh, Roy Keane do what he does. I, was, I remember being at a game at Highbury and I was pitch side at a game when Eric Cantona got sent off. And Roy Keane, even when he's not playing well himself, he used to bully the other players to play him well. And that was what was fantastic about Roy Keane. And uh, every team needs a Roy Keane. And uh, sometimes I think Roy Keane should be, uh, he should be kept at Carrington. And if a player needs a little bit of a pep talk, <laughs> maybe you go and see Roy Keane. But some guys just need a, an arm around the shoulder. And uh, I sense that Anthony Martial is probably one of those guys. And uh, he obviously didn't thrive under Mourinho, but... I think we're going to see the best now, hopefully, of Anthony Martial under Oli. Oli knows how to get the best out of players and being a striker himself, I'm sure that Anthony Martial will benefit from the experience of working alongside Oli Gunnar Solskjaer. OK, I think we're just about done, to be honest. It's uh, coming up for 10 o'clock. I couldn't raise Gordon this week, but uh, we heard Gordon last week. I just wanted to get him on, really, to have him on without the echo. And uh, maybe he was frightened of the echo coming back. <laughs> well, we did chat for 10 minutes earlier, but uh, we... we uh, we had to watch the games and then uh, couldn't get him back again. But anyway, next week, not sure what's going to happen next week. I'm not sure, in fact, how long I'm going to carry on with this show because uh, I've got to get back to uh, earning a living. And uh, hopefully uh, yeah, I've got a couple of little jobs coming in and uh, maybe this show can help me uh, promote uh, some of the work that I'm doing. I'm not, I, do, uh, I do promote the uh, films that I've made from time to time. And last week we had Joseph Tedesco on talking about the Malta film. I'm not going to talk about that one again today, but what's this one? Yeah, Bridie Murphy. I love you, Bridie Murphy. No relation to uh, the actual famous Murphy family, but one of our big fans. She's uh, here every week, and uh, I love you, Bridie. Thank you very much. We've never met, I don't think, anyway. And uh, thank you, everybody, for us who's uh, been on, along tonight. And I've waffled on a little bit, and uh, it's been difficult tonight because I've had no BT packages, so it's all been live talk. And uh, I was going to get John Neild on live before the show and have him lined up, but we didn't get round to doing that because John was uh, caught in transition from uh, watching the game to going back home anyway i do uh, appreciate you all being here and i hope i haven't bored you and uh what else i've got, I've got a little just to make you smile i've got another alex mcneil video so to uh, to wrap up it's something that you can find on one of my youtube channels and it's just a little bit of a series outtake so if i click the right button we're going to go to uh, a little bit more of alex neil and that's goodbye from him and good night from me see you later guys <laughs> I know, you've got a lot <laughs> Come on, the sooner we get this done, the better. Come on. You gotta look at John. Go and look at John. Quick, come on. Do, 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 do. He's do, doing the flossing. Come on, you ready? Ready? Ready, quick.
Ready, three. Go on, look at John. Look at John. All right, three, two, one. Don't tell me. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Yeah, adult pal. Are you ready now or are you still? Yeah, yeah. Hey. Yeah. Oh. Beautiful shit. Look at the camera for a minute. Yeah. Okay. Come on, you reds. Come on, you reds. Go, are you reds? Right, low forward. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. The camera, you ready? You ready? Steady. <laughs> you ready? Come on. You ready? Okay, there we go. There's a big bus behind us. Yeah. You ready? Come on, look for, keep looking at John. Three, two, one. <laughs> That is a wrap. <laughs> and that's definitely a wrap. If you're still with me, because we did have a few interruptions there with the broadcast, the transmission. When I get to put it out on YouTube uh, tomorrow, probably I'll take out the glitches and uh, clean it up a little bit. So thanks for watching. If you're still there, and uh, see you next time, guys. Thanks a lot.